Bellu, mae gael mymryn o draw, <laughs> bach o draw yn fi'n hyn, a crysawyd pawb yn ffurfiol i'r sesiwn heddiw. Dyn ni seminar i elod athletig ar adfywio canol tref. Mae y seminar mae'n, neu'r gwemyn ar mae'n edrych yn bennaf ar adroddiad nath o'n i gyhoeddi, uh, ni ar chwyddo cymryllu gyhoeddi ym mis Medi. A Sean y dwi'n a fi fydd yn eich tywys chytro sesiwn heddiw. Ond mae'r sesiwn yma'n cael ei chynnal gyn uh, gynnwyd o arfer da sy'n rhan o'r chwyddio Cymru. Ar ôl ar chwyddio Cymru fel bwy siwr dych chi'n ymwybodol, ydy archwilio cyrf cyhoeddus Cymru o'r mwyaf yn llywodraeth Cymru i'r lleiad i'r cyngor cymuned lleia. A ein hamcanion ydy rhoi sicrwydd o pres cyhoeddus cael ei wario i'n gyrioli'n yn iawn. Eu glyro sut mae yn sydd fel pobl yn elwa hwnnw fo a gysbrydoli'r gwasanaethau cyhoeddus i'n i fod y gorau fedr nhw fod. Er, fel rhan o'r chwilio Cymru, mae gyfnwyd fe arfer da yn trio ysbrydoli pobl a trio dangos y siampla a mwyn iddyn nhw helpu fe wneud y hunan. Da ni'n anog pobl i sbio ar beth mae pobl yn eraill yn gwneud a defnyddio'r darna sy'n gwneud synwyr yn i cydestu nhw hunan. Felly, i ddechrau, mae gynnau ni beidio oedi lot mwy a neu na- ddechrau na- trosglwyddo i Nick Selwyn. Nick oedd tu ôl ydy awdur yr adroddiad fydd o'n i gyflwyno rwan a'r adfywio cynnod tref. Mae o yn reolwr ar chwilio fan i fy mam i'n gwneud astudiaethau ar um, cynedlaethol yn llywodraeth leol a mae o hefyd yn ei gwaith ar chwilio ar yr um, awdurdodau tân ag achub a'r parciau cynedlaethol. So, Nick, what would you? Thank you, Sean. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining today. Um, as Sean said, that the purpose of today is to really share um, for you as members some findings from our recent review of Town Centre Regeneration. So I'm just going to share screen. If someone could just let me know when this appears. So I'm not talking to something that's not there. Yeah. Okay, I'll, um, I'll start from the beginning. Hopefully that works. There you go. Okay, so really the, in- the intention of this morning is to run through um, and set out the key findings from our work. Um, we're doing this, I guess, with yourselves is to ensure that you as members, either with a cabinet role that deals with regeneration or as a scrutiny member of a relevant committee that has oversight of regeneration or town centres, has an opportunity, I guess, to find out the detail of our findings, um, but also ask any questions. Importantly, at the end of the, the presentation, there's also an update in how Welsh Government has taken forward our report and the things that are currently happening at a national level, um, which will no doubt be of interest to yourselves. Sean explained that we um, both of us work for the Auditor General for Wales, the and Audit Wales itself. I thought it'd be helpful just to set out a little bit of background about our, our role and remit, but also specifically how the work that I deal with fits into this. So the Auditor General for Wales is the statutory auditor. That means he has responsibility for auditing named bodies in the Public Audit Wales Act. So the three main areas we focus on are the Welsh Government itself and its sponsored bodies, health service bodies in Wales, and local government bodies in Wales. So that includes the 22 principal councils, the three national parks and three fire and rescue authorities. In terms of the work we undertake, we've got three broad areas of activity. One is the audit of accounts, and we provide opinion on them. The second part is to examine and report on how local government bodies and others are using their um, powers to deliver economic, efficient and effective services. We call that value for money. And then the third one is really around statutory discretion where pieces of legislation identify a role for us um, in terms of how we undertake certain activities. Just to be clear, we're not part of Welsh Government, we're not directed by Welsh Government, and it's entirely within the gift of the Auditor General to choose what he um, wants to fo- focus on, but we do respond to, to sort of queries from the public. In terms of, of local government studies specifically, this tranche of work is really about a national situation, so it's very different to your local audit programme. Our work is intended to focus on issues of national importance to understand um, how things are working and whether there are opportunities for improvement. Um, so we look at things like value for money and how services are being delivered, whether bodies with responsibility are able to discharge their functions and services effectively, and whether the guidance and statutory provisions set by the Senate are really working in effect. Um, our reports can make recommendations to different tiers of government and other public bodies, 
And importantly, it does provide the Public Accounts and Public Administration Committee um, and other Senate committees the opportunity to hold Welsh ministers to account. So two years ago, we did a piece of work on planning within local government. That resulted in an inquiry by the Public Accounts Committee at that time. They called ministers before them um, to hold them to account for some of the failings they felt were in the planning system. So the report's very much at that national level, but is no doubt important to yourselves as the key level of government um, at a local level. In terms of our work, um, the report itself has got three sections to it, and we split it into what we call past, present and future town centres. Um, but I just wanted to start with some context, and, and this is really important, I think, um, in how we presented our work uh, and how we view town centres. And 192 is, is, I wouldn't say it's the magic number, but it's certainly the most important number in the basis of our work. When you look at towns in Wales and how you define them, there's no actual national definition of what constitutes a town. Uh, the best that we've come across is the Institute of Economic Affairs, where they, they've identified um, areas with more than 2,000 inhabitants. Using that sort of analysis, we basically um, followed suit and sort of came up with an, with an indication that there are 192 places in Wales which have more than 2,000 people living in them. So, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to define a town directly, but these are areas which people um, in terms of how they receive services, how they engage with people locally, they perceive them to be their key communities, things they refer to as towns. What that tells us is that towns themselves are geographically dispersed and spread. There's more of a congregation in southeast Wales, less so in, in the middle of Wales, and, and another sort of congregation of towns on the A55 corridor in North Wales. So geography plays an important role in this. Um, the other key factors to think about really is affluence. Some towns are really well placed to take benefits economically, others less so. Um, but towns themselves are not standalone. And this is probably one of the big messages from our report that you need to think of towns as being interdependent and being linked together. So not every town will have a building society or bank or post office, but they will access those services in neighboring towns. Not every town will have a leisure service or a leisure center. They'll access them in neighboring towns. So towns are interdependent. However, one of the big challenges in Wales at this time is transportation. Towns are not always well interconnected. So there is still an issue around infrastructure and how people can move about the country easily. And I think the last point we want to really draw out about the towns themselves is that they do change over time. No town stands still. We'll have moments when they are um, economically rising and moments when they're facing economic challenges. And some of this is really about the economy and how society interacts and works, but it also re re relates to the impact of national and local government policy. A good way of showing how towns are independent, interdependent is this graphic from our report, which provides a snapshot of the, those areas within Rondekun and Taft with 2,000 or more people living within them. So you can see there's 21 communities, generally well, not well spaced out, pretty close to each other. The two principal towns are Aberdeer and Pontypridd. They're about 12 and a half miles apart. But then you've got 19 other communities, as I say, with 2,000 people or more. And the longest travel distance um, for these areas is only 23 and a half miles and no journey is, is over an hour really within RCT. So that hopefully sort of demonstrates that when you talk about town centre regeneration, it's important to think about the town you're focusing on, but also how it's an interdependent with other areas within, within that community. <clears throat> Third thing really to say about the context, and this is a really important one, and it's, it's the, the Welsh equivalent to the London effect. Roughly half of the towns in Wales are within one hour of Cardiff. So you'll naturally see that services will gravitate to Cardiff because it's the, the biggest conurbation in the country. Um, it has more attraction for people to base themselves there and invest in that area simply because other services are already based there. But that does mean that towns within that one hour travel distance um, often see services being sucked into them. So that's just a bit of context. In terms of the report itself, as I say, it's split into three sections. And the first part talks about the past and what's happened to towns in the last 50 or 60 years. So the starting point really is to look at, at how Wales has changed post-World War II. And I think the important point here is that in 1947, we had for the first time national planning policy guidance set by the UK government that really set out a role for local government in shaping and, and changing the face of, of bomb-damaged, war-torn cities and towns throughout the country. And, and that piece of legislation introduced a number of key things most importantly, was, though, was the uh, ability for local government to use compulsory purchase order powers to clear town centre areas and regenerate them 
for the future. So one of the things that you saw happen, I guess, from 1948 onwards, was many towns looking to regenerate to respond to the war damaged areas. Um, and one of the things that became ever more important in regeneration was to make the town centres uh, more focused on, on what they call central area shopping. They were seen as the most lucrative form of development um, and had huge value in terms of land price and land use compared to other options. And shopping really became the, the, the sort of um, the bedrock of town centre regeneration for two reasons. One, it generates income because it, it accrues money through non-domestic rates. And secondly, it attracts visitors to towns. If you've got a good offer, a good level of service, then you're going to get shoppers coming to your area who will spend money. So it creates wealth locally within your community. Um, so that's that's why shopping, I guess, became the, the, the sort of the big predominant focus in many town centre regeneration projects. However, the one thing I would say is that retail, whilst it plays an important role, it doesn't actually create wealth. It just absorbs what's already there. So people with disposable income are the ones spending. It's not really a generator of, of new money. And town centres, I guess, you know, the other part that we really draw out in our report is you need to think of the changing landscape of town centres that emanates from this planning policy. And successively from 1947 onwards, we've seen refinements in planning policy and changes taking place. So this is just a, an, an example drawn from Merthyr Tidville, where you can see that the, the 1900s turned the century or the 20th century. You had the traditional town centre built around the high street. By 1950, the, the, the introduction of the motor car was more um, prevalent, so you saw a change in use in that town centre. Moving to the 1970s, you can see the introduction of a, a new shopping centre at Tidville Place. Um, and then on to 2000, uh, another development in the town centre at Beacons Place. And then in the last 20 years, two big out-of-town developments um, have taken place at Caparatha Retail Park and Trago Mill. So if you look at this geographically, this gives you the sense of how ten town centres change. So you've got the traditional heart of Merthyr at number one. You know, they've been like that, I guess, for about 30 or 40 years, certainly up until the Second World War. Then in the, in the sort of 1970s, 1980s, um, the town centre redevelopments took place to the south of the traditional high street. And then subsequently, you see this shift towards um, better linkage with the A470 to be able to um, attract people in by car. And car became ever more important as, as, the, op, as, as the way of people accessing these towns. So what it tells you is the town centre landscapes change. And there are other examples we could have used. This is just one for, for Merthyr. But fundamentally, this is about planning policy. Decisions taken by that authority have led to this, this change in how town centres are configured. One of the big issues that, that's really been played out, certainly with businesses that work within town centres, uh, are non-domestic rates. So we know that, the, that roughly around 113,000 businesses in Wales pay non-domestic rates. And importantly, they make a massive contribution to the Welsh Government's annual budget, roughly a billion pounds. Um, the one big challenge, however, is that compared to the e-commerce sector, business rates is a levy based on physical town, town centres, physical retail that um, online retailers don't have to pay. So the, the, sort of the analysis by the Centre for um, Businesses in Town Centres has identified that generally if you've got a shop in a town centre, you need to generate around 2.3% 2, 2 funding just to pay your business rates. Um, the comparable tax for e-commerce is just over half a percent. So there's not a level playing field really. They, they're not benefiting to the same extent, but it is a big challenge for, for businesses. The other thing that's happened, I guess, in the last 50 or 60 years is, is the change in what we call anchor services in town centres. So this is national data that's been taken from various research, primarily by the um, UK Parliament uh, Research Service. And it just shows what's happened in terms of banks, building societies, post offices and ATMs in, in that period. As you can see from the data, there's been a massive reductions in banks, building societies, then particularly post offices. And ATMs, which were seen as, as a, an alternative to physical banking, they are starting to reduce in, in prevalence as well as people move to um, mobile payments and use of smartphones. But what it tells you is if your town doesn't have any of these services, then it's unlikely to attract people into it. So I, I live in the Vale of Glamorgan. I live in Dinas Powys. When I first lived here, we had three banks, um, a post office. Now we've got no post office. It's a shared facility in a shop and no bank. So over time, I've seen these services disappear um, and my local bank and post office now is in Penarth. But that's been played out across Wales in its entirety.
And the other big thing that's happened, um, whilst we've seen this shift in town centres with more demanding um, operating environment for businesses, there's also been a massive increase in online shopping. So this is data produced by the Office for National Statistics that shows you in sort of the, the six years up to the pandemic, online shopping increased by 10%. Since the pandemic, it's gone up by nearly 15%, just fallen back to um, just under 30% uh, in April of this year. So you can see that the pandemic has accelerated the shift in people preferring to shop online than, than, than use physical retail. And the one thing that um, really does stand out when you go through some of the national data is that the UK as a country spends more money online and through the e-commerce sector than our neighbours in Europe. So this is information from the Centre for Retail Research. And the top line shows how much money is spent, and this is billions of pounds, online in the UK. And you look at the comparisons with France, Germany, Spain, Italy, and so forth, where we are significantly higher than most, slightly higher than Germany, which is the nearest comparator. But in terms of market share, it's roughly around a quarter of all sales is now online. So that obviously has an impact on demand for physical retail within town centres. Then the final point really about the past that we just need to think through is that often when we talk about town centres, um, it focuses on retail and, uh, and we know retail has played an important role and it's really important for the vibrancy and success of towns, but it's not the only type of services based there. Most town centres are pretty much residential. So when you go through some of this data produced by the Office of National Statistics, you can see that um, the proportion of residential, which is the, the brighter blue bar on the right hand side, ranges from around 40% through to 60%. So re residential is probably the, the sort of main bedrock of town centres throughout Wales, and no area has um, over half of the town centre uh, let over to, to retail. And in Merthyr's case, it's just over a quarter, just under a quarter. So it's an important point to raise that town centres are not just about retail, we know that, but retail has become synonymous with them and has become really the, the, the success or failure of a town is judged by how well the retail sector is working. So what this tells us is in the past, there's a lot of challenges that have been building up over time through different various routes um, that brings us to really to the future and now and the pandemic and what's happened in that period. So our report looks at a number of strands on this is, and, and really it's about how, how government at all levels has responded to the pandemic and the challenges that particularly local government faces at this time. So the first thing we would say, just admit someone, is that in terms of the pandemic itself, our survey work with citizens and businesses universally came back with um, some really strong messages. 90% of businesses felt really well supported by Welsh government and 76% of businesses saw their ongoing support from Welsh government and local government by extension as essential to recovery. Um, COVID-19 also encouraged businesses to, to rethink their role and to, I guess, consider options to diversify and develop different types of services. So we know that just um, under three quarters moved to online provision, um, just under 40% moved to home delivery takeaway, around a fifth used mobile services, including pop-ups, and 10% considered uh, an actually converted premises for alternative use. So that tells us that businesses, through the support of Welsh and local government, were able to respond effectively to that very challenging environment. However, despite all of this, we also know that the, the retail sector did experience some significant losses in terms of um, the shop closures and, and people losing their jobs. And current estimates are that one in seven high street shops are currently empty. Uh, just over 18,000 stores have closed and 220,000 people have lost their job in retail since January 2020, just before the pandemic started. So this again is information published by the Centre for Retail Research um, that just gives you analysis of, of how things stand. And obviously the big year that really saw the, the massive impact come through was in 2020. Interestingly, that this is a sector that does um, change quite considerably. However, it's clear that the pandemic has been a major shock to retail and has really pushed through a lot of shop closures. So second thing that we talk about um, in terms of the current situation is that there has been a healthy level of funding from Welsh Government, either directly to um, bodies or enabled since 2014 to regenerate town centres through 13 different funding streams. Um, just, to, just under £900 million has been invested. Uh, the one thing we would say about these, these funding streams is that they're often um, set against different priorities with different conditions. 
And whilst the funding is welcomed by councils, we do know that some grant conditions and the annual bidding process in particular can be quite onerous and quite challenging to continually spend time um, investing in, in this sort of activity. And, and the focus has very much been on physical regeneration. So I think the message we have is that there is some opportunity for Welsh Government to simplify how it manages these programmes, think about streamlining them and making the grant conditions a lot smoother and easier for local authorities to use uh, and being a bit more flexible in what you focus the funding on, not just about um, physical regeneration. You need to factor in other, other things if you really want to make that transformational change. Uh, then the, the, the third point that we wanted to raise in our report really about the current situation is that we do know it's challenging for councils. We've had a period of um, austerity where councils have had to address budget reductions and that's often been seen in services which have not been as protected as say social care and education um, and that's been played through particularly in regeneration. So we know that there's an ambition there to regenerate town centres but that's not always matched with capacity within organisations, having people in sufficient numbers with the right attitude, skills and drive. We know that regeneration is, is a tough call. You've been asked to make choices on where to invest money. You don't have sufficient to invest in all communities, but you need to make the, those, those tough decisions about where your priorities lie. We also know that there are tools available to support regeneration. However, from our review, what became clear is that these are not always being used. There are some really good examples across Wales where councils are using compulsory purchase orders and other things to drive regeneration, but it's not uniform. One of the, the big changes and one of the big aspirations, certainly of the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act, is that councils now need to ensure they involve local communities in decision making in shaping the priorities and the solutions that you come up with, which is a very challenging thing to do. We know that. But probably the biggest um, issue that you've been facing as authorities is the lack of revenue funding. And that's something that we've certainly raised in our report that there needs to be some pump prime of funding from Welsh Government to support regeneration going forward. In terms of the future then, where do we go next with this, this work and the sort of things that we see coming through from our review? Well, the first thing I think I'd say is that importantly, in, in the Welsh Government's reconstruction plan from COVID that was published in October 2020, they set out what they saw as their key challenges and key priorities. And importantly, they, they put one of the key priorities in the short term was to focus on town centre regeneration. So they, they've built this around what they call their town centre first policy. And in the reconstruction document, they have a number of targets and actions they've got in there. But one of which is to really make town centres at the heart of decision making um, going forward. And things that they're talking about introducing include new funding streams to acquire strategic sites and prioritising the opportunity to bring more services back into town centres, um, dedicating funding to create additional facilities on high streets which may have lost services, <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, making better access to public open spaces and green infrastructure, they see this as being really important, um, and then supporting the provision of remote working hubs so that public services are more accessible to people. So um, this sort of shift towards let's see if we can just invest more in town centres and make other parts of um, the public sector work more effectively to support town centres. In terms of the things that we, we see as the big issues that need to be really thought through, we've called them the four eyes, and we, we call these intention, involvement, informed and intervention. And in our report, we, we draw some examples of how we've seen this working elsewhere in the country, but also in Wales. So in terms of intention, uh, I'm not sure how, how well members know about the um, the work in Stockton on Tees in the northeast of England. They are an authority of around 100,000 people, um, traditional area which had a, a heavy focus on shipbuilding and the steel community. Over time, those services and um, have been lost, and the town centre really ran into um, a fair degree of decline. This authority took the decision to change the town centre um, and have really focused on creating a, a more vibrant um, town that focuses on green infrastructure. So the, the second strand we call involvement we know that there's some really good examples across Wales of how local communities, town and community councils, working with councils, are really turning around their areas. So there's two there, Newtown and Tanslu and, and Love Triorki um, bids and place plans, really good examples of involvement. Um, we know that information is critical to this. You're being asked to make some big choices on where to invest funding. So um, one of the things that we wanna see happen is that you, you use that money um, wisely so we know there's some really good examples in Carmarthenshire, 
and the work of the Scottish Town Partnership Review in how they've used information to drive their strategies. And then finally, um, some examples are on intervention where you need to become more interventionist and challenge some of these, these difficult issues head on. And the examples in our report talk about Dumfries in Scotland and the town centre regeneration in Rondekill and Taff. I'll just run through a few examples that I mentioned. This is one on, on Stockton. So on the left-hand side, you can see what was a 1980s traditional um, regeneration. This was sort of backing onto the river. So it disconnected the town centre from the river. So if you look at the right-hand graph, it's broadly the bit where the bridge is. Um, so you get a sense of where it's located. Uh, the, the, the council took the decision to, to purchase up empty shops, to knock them down, and then to focus on creating a green space, reconnecting more effectively with the river, reducing the number of empty buildings they had in the town centre so that you created more demand and, and really focused on, on compacting it, but in a way that, that allowed people to have better use of the town centre. So it's, it's quite a, an ambitious programme that the authorities um, embarked on, but one that does seem to be um, generating more interest to invest in the area and support the town to, to regenerate and, and thrive in the future. Then uh, the Love Triorchy bid, that's, that's a picture in the top one is of tri the Triorchy area itself. Um, the bid was established in 2019 and set a number of priorities really about local community driving some of the choices and really having a strong voice for local businesses and local people on, on what they want to see happen in their area. And it resulted in, um, in Triorchy being declared UK High Street of the Year in 2019. And I know the pandemic's been challenging for everyone, but this particular um, bid and this particular partnership that Triorchy has gone from strength to strength, and they really have sort of risen through the, the, the pandemic to, to work really well. In terms of informed, um, these are two examples that we picked up in our review that we would strongly recommend authorities to think about. One is the Town Centre Toolkit that the Scottish Towns Partnership Review produced, which gives um, some really good ideas on how you can use information and engage with people really to start developing local solutions, the opportunities are presented. And then um, the second initiative is something that was, that's been driven under the review, but it's been promoted by the Scottish Government. Is Scotland Loves Local, really um, creating systems to, to invest locally and use local services and local facilities with a national branded approach. Final strand, then the intervention part. Um, this is some examples from the mid steeple court in Dumfries, where there was a rundown area in the centre of the town and the authority um, working with the local community um, really led to some regeneration in the heart of that particular area. And they've, they've now moved forward with this, brought in some new civic infrastructure, worked closely with the Carnegie Trust, um, really allowed for the community to, to lead the regeneration, but created a place which has really addressed some long-standing infrastructure problems in, in, in Dumfries itself. And then the final one, a bit closer to home, um, the authority in RCT knew that it had a problem when it lost its anchor um, shop, Marks and Spencer's in the town centre. So they took an active decision to um, tackle some large vacant premises and have now created quite a vibrant town centre with a new library, a new council contact service, some leisure and fitness centres, but also the relocation of transport for Wales offices. So, you know, there, there are ways you can do this and there are good examples from across Wales and wider on how authorities are using their powers to drive some of this work. Final part then for me, and before I hand over for questions, um, our report itself makes six recommendations, mostly pitched at Welsh Government to tackle, but we do see that there's a, a need to focus on non-domestic rates and address some of the challenges around that. We know that transportation and car parking is a big issue, and that's been an ongoing problem for many years. Um, but you know, fundamentally, unless you get that right, a lot of the other things you can do are not gonna happen. We know that the funding programme, whilst generous, has got some problems attached to it in terms of the conditions used and the focus on revenue needs to be added in, not just capital resourcing. We believe that Welsh Government needs to support authorities to build capacity and expertise. Um, we, we feel that if you're going to really drive this agenda, you need to have people on the ground who can support you to deliver what you want to achieve. Uh, and importantly, we think that Welsh Government really needs to make town centre first, central to all policy it develops and delivers, not just in um, the regeneration field. And then finally, we produce what we call a self-evaluation tool to help you as scrutiny members um, assess where you see your authority at this time. So the tool itself brings together a range of data um, that we refer to in the report, but it does give you the, the chance to look at things in a bit more detail. Um, you can find the tool on our website. And as I say, it, it looks at the interconnectedness of towns, so it shows how 
different towns in different areas are interconnected with others. Um, the sort of services that are available on the ground and then some of the challenges that you need to think about going forward. It also includes a range of information from some surveys we undertook with businesses and citizens. So hopefully that gives you a good sense of um, the various things that we, we've, we've brought together in our report um, that can help you make some choices locally. Then the final bit is a self-assessment tool we produce, which gives you some information on um, the areas we would expect to see focused on in going forward under the four themes of involvement, intention, informed and intervention. And again, it's there to really support you as members to, to understand, I guess, where the, the situation locally is at this time, the sort of things that you need to think about in coming to decisions uh, and how to take those sort of difficult agendas forward. Next steps in, final part. Um, I just wanted to update on what Welsh Government's done and, and how they've taken our report forward. So we reported in September uh, and since then, we've had a response from Welsh Government accepting the report in full and its findings and recommendations. At the same time we were doing our work, they'd also commissioned Professor Carol Williams from Manchester University to produce a report looking at, in detail at three towns in Wales to understand some of the local issues to sort of match our national aspirations. And his work looks at Bridgend, Halford West and Bangor. And again, makes mixed recommendations, which the minister has accepted. Uh, the Deputy Minister for Climate Change has reconstituted the old Ministerial Town Centre Action Group and created work streams looking at financial incentives, planning and involvement. Um, and he's tasked the working groups with identified opportunities to improve the current situation. Importantly, he's made it very clear that he's not interested in replaying uh, a discussion on the problems. What he wants is solutions, things that work and things that can move this agenda forward. And that's just uh, the key responsibilities of the group set out and, you know, just gives you a sense, I guess, of, of where the, the Welsh Government is trying to drive this agenda and the, the sort of issues they want to see happening. I won't go through those in detail. It's uh, not the most interesting. Probably the bit there is, though, is what's happened to date. So in, in the financial group, they've really focused their activities on non-domestic rates and they come up with a list of options for the future. They're looking at um, ways they can support local government to ease and make better use of, of town centres through residential or reasonable developments. There's a strand of work they're undertaking on public transport. How can they strengthen this and simplify the funding schemes grants? In terms of planning and incentives, um, probably the key one I would say is that they are very open to uh, a range of um, bodies are involved in this process to identify what Welsh government needs to change to help regenerate town centres. And they are building up learning from a range of different programmes that are taking place um, within Wales, the leader programme, uses EU funding, but also things like community asset transfers and the work in Scotland. So that's just a, a quick update where things have got to. And I'm conscious that was a very quick one. So, so apologies if um, it's a little bit quick. I just want to get to any questions you've got. And I'll hand back to Sean at that point. And that's the end of the presentation. So thanks. Nick. Right. Um, so he... Stop your hand on the screen, please, Nick. Diach around. Ma, a velvet of Nick, the ma, severed on the accord of an eatrovatis. Ian Peth, Suetti, and Harovi, um, or we see have an eight or some sort with that are, uh, one of the sever at all the other matty. Vine to Gasilti at a hung one of this of policy, my matlemar. That man and Beth Beth in the chat did not when they have a policy park here, policy trethy business. Let us better. Ah, my connection with them. Lots of stuff about economy. So they know about the development of our with them. Quite cafe about the dice. Let's say Ruan at the Kavlachi. I um, but that's some again. I love it when they can Keith Evans with them nice. Yeah, um, to our Christian Sigilla being a saloon, Nick's again, he win a dim. My slides are a horse pursuit to disown him, Dano, where he bought an tree volume, a bernion, a dustin bead, shower a dim medical, a son of Dano and cleaner, Casus Pledig. Now, do we have been well, Keating or Redivio Geridigion? Seen sheer lady gown, Timon Chevy Niam, certain Sharadam Connectio, a Cassati, a Chevy Artigilid, Timon Manugid and Hanerau, 
tri chwarter am sir wrth ei gilydd efo beth. A dyna beth yw trefi marchnad yn ei, yn ei uh, hinsawd. Wrth gwrs mae'r mae'r drefn wedi newyn awr i ni fyn ein bwyn siarad o ardal llyndysau. Um, mae'r pedwar banc wedi gadael ni. Um, a lli o wasanaethau cohoeddus arall gan gynwys wasanaethau gan o'r sir i hunan. Um, oherwydd y pwysau riannol sydd wedi bod ar ddyn. So byddwn ni wedi hoffi gweld uh, dipyn mwy ynglyn ar gydestu'n uh, gwledig yn, yn yr adroddiad hyn. Beth arall wedi ein hefyd i ni'n sôn am argrynerthu trefydd y gallu, Mae'n y broblem fawr gyda ni'n gyda phosfets yn mynd mewn i'r refoni ydych yn ymlaen. Y mae dros hanner y sir gyrredigion bellach, na allu ddim yn ddatblygu dim o gwbl na, so mae'r llywodraeth ar yr un llaw yn dod allan y cyfleion i ddatblygu a, a cael, cael trefi ddi arall gyfeirio o'r gyti. Mae'n ar y llaw arall wedi'n trw cyfoeth yn ffyriol Cymru yn gweud na allu ni'n ddatblygu o gwbl, so sy'n tai, sy'n um, ffactri oedd, uh, busnesau sy'n fyd fel angen lle digwydd yn un awr, achos mae'r mae'r uh, eis bod um, dŵr Cymru yn cael y systemau yn iawn o fewn, lle maen nhw'n trin y gwastraff yma cyn bod nhw'n gallu'n dŵr allan i'r afon. So, mae'r llaw dde a'r llaw chwyth i fi o, o fewn tywodraeth ddim yn cyd yn ni neu cyd gweithio gyda'i gilydd. Dwi'n sylwadau fel yw felly, Sean, Anig. Diolch chi'ch. Nick, do you say anything? Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for the comments. They were really helpful. Uh, on the point about the, the, the report being urban-centric, I, I don't think it is. The challenges you just outlined are exactly the same um, in urban areas as they are in rural Wales. Transportation is an issue across much of southeast Wales. I know that it may not appear that the, the towns are, are much closer together and geographically not as dispersed, but I can assure you they have exactly the same challenges with public uh, transport infrastructure, um, car parking costs. Uh, the phosphate issue, I am well aware of the the challenges from my, my work in the national park. So I do understand the difficulties that creates in the water stream and um, how that can impact on services locally. Um, and I don't think I would disagree with other, other points either, Keith, that um, you know, the, the impact of austerity has seen towns lose vital services. Uh, what we're trying to do, I guess, is, is, is give Welsh government the evidence to be able to make some decisions and changes. And hopefully that's what we presented to them. And I, but you know, overall, I think the points you raised are all very valid. Thank you. Um, can you have it loud with a gain concorded JD Morgan? So he'll carry the microphone away now for a hit. Yeah, uh, Dama Vidio, um, we can really are kind of cast a thing of Portal, but uh, Ardal Glynedd, the Glynedd and Drev, Vach, uh, and a Camoid. A question, see that you both a D, um, a Sturriath, Pabs in Sinedric Mounir, um, Dutch Plagiade. Anglina Maint Trevi. Uh, Hanyu, ni wedi clywed um, uh, lot o beth y da heddi ynglyna sut mae ail uh, fywio cae Trevi. Ond beth am y Trevi bach, mae glynedd yn rhyw um, pedair mil o, o, o boblogaeth, ydy glynedd yn, yn cael ei ystyried yn dref digon mawr uh, i elwa o'r datblygiadau ni'n, ni'n clywed amdano nhw nawr. Um, achos mae'n yrru o'r critical mass gyda'i trefi, ac mae'r oso steg mil o bobl mewn uh, tre hwb wedyn mae ma, ma pethau'n digwydd. Os oedd ni'n llai na hynny, mae pethau'n dieddol o, o beidio digwydd. Felly beth, beth yw agwedd um, y, y cyflwynydd felly y tuag at maint tre tebyg i glynydd, felly pedwar mil o boblogaeth. Ond ni'n dref hwb gyda pentrefi bach ti fas, um, ond ni angen help yn trwy'n meddwl. Diolch. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. No, thank you for the question. Um, I think you saw in the presentation that we re referenced two very small examples, Newtown and Tlatlachairan and Triorki. Both of those, I would say, are smaller than Glynith or on par with Glynith. So those are areas, um, certainly in Triorki, the population I, I, is, is about roughly the same, I'd say, um, in terms of numbers. And, and they have the same physical and geographical challenges that Glynith has i.e. that is close to other areas. Um, it's well connected with um, a, a road network. It's had the similar challenges. I guess the difference there is that the, the local community has driven a lot of the activity and it's been able to work with and facilitate that involvement, which is the hard part. Um, and with the Newtown one, the approach taken there is for the town and community councils pretty much led the regeneration through the production of a place plan. 
So they saw the planning system as the best vehicle for them to think about how best to regenerate and sustain services in their town centre uh, and had, a, I, I guess, a strong leadership role being played by local people on the ground who are best suited to understand and know the area. And I think that's the route they've taken. I take your point that if you're in a bigger city like Cardiff, you then you're naturally going to gravitate there um, in terms of service provision so because it's seen as having a lot more services to tie things together and more opportunity to make profit. But there are many communities that do buck the trend uh, and do make the case. And I think it comes back down to the four things we said. If you've got the information and you're well informed and understand the strategic choices you have to make, if you've got the right people being involved who can provide that leadership, whatever tier of government, wherever they are in the community, you've got local authorities who are prepared to use their powers to make some really tough choices, but they'll be the right choices in the long term. Um, but the one thing I would say is you need is, is to have that pump prime funding. And that's certainly the case we made to Welsh Government. You've got to really invest funding to support this, this challenging environment. Yeah. Um, do you wait to write in a chat of it? Did good body want to dig dear dig with that can set on a dig and all our punk? Uh, man, can any door or we bought a spatter can go with link here at Rothiat, um, foundational economy research of Nick and Queer at Savannah Gavlin yet. Um, my link seen in a chat. Um, as in Harvey at the Valonic Data Relven, but the Donegumineta to give the credit with the good 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 knock. Right, I can only allow even a good game. I think called the map and can do it. Can call it Mike Pierce. As a healer. Good make it. Yes. Yes, good morning. Um, I'm an independent council with Flinchy County Council and Buckley Town Council in North East Wales. And, and thank you for the webinar this morning. Uh, it's for a few questions for Nick, please. Um, did the audit concentrate on any particular part of North Wales or was it a general view? Uh, it's not reflected within the slides, but I'm sure we were, we were all in, included. Also, um, you showed a slide showing 50% of towns in Wales within one hour of Cardiff. Well, obviously, for North Wales, that, that doesn't apply. But I wondered uh, in the report that you may have put to Welsh Government whether you could have said that, you know, a large percentage of towns in North Wales are within one hour of Chester, and particularly in the northeast of Wales, we are well within one hour of Liverpool. So where the towns in the south tend to uh, move into Cardiff for facilities, jobs in the north, it's either Chester or Liverpool. And I think that would have been useful to have in the report. Um, you also mentioned about uh, a preference, I think it was a preference of health and social facilities in town centres. Uh, it was about well, three years ago, four years ago, we had a brand new facility in the town of Buckley, but it wasn't where we, the councillors and the people wanted it. We wanted it in the town centre. There was no public land available, but there was land. But the district valuer said it was too expensive and we were forced to have the building outside of the town and the assembly member of the town said that we take it or we leave it and we couldn't risk um, not having a health center because of its location. Um, on the Love Triorchy bid, could you just advise whether that was to Welsh Government or to the local council? And you mentioned Professor Carol Williams um, looking at Bridge End Haverford West and Bangor. Uh, the largest town in North Wales is, is Wrexham, and I wondered whether you'd done any studies in that area. And, and finally, um, a town uh, that we represent. It's, it's the location sometimes causes a problem. We're on one side, we have Mould, which is a very affluent and vibrant market town. Um, recently praised by Wrexham as a shining example. And four miles to the east, we have a major shopping park, which is in competition for Chester. So our location puts us at a disadvantage. And 
you know, regeneration would be uh, useful. And um, we look forward to having a look at the toolkit and taking it forward with uh, a few questions, a few observations, but, uh, but thank you very much for inviting us today. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. I'll, I'll, I think I've got all six, so I'll, uh, I'll try my best to answer them. So your first one was about, did we undertake fieldwork with North Wales? Yeah, yes, we did. We spoke to council officers in every local authority in Wales. That covers off North Wales as well. We also held a number of um, online focus groups that was made available to elected members. And we had one specifically for North Wales. I think we had in total six or 10 from the six councils in North Wales. So we took those opportunities to really get an understanding of some of the local issues that you mentioned. Um, the border issue, yeah, absolutely. That comes up really strongly. I've presented here on 192 towns in Wales, but I recognize that, you know, the border, there's gonna be a similar number of towns that run down the length of the country, Shrewsbury, Hereford, you mentioned Chester, Liverpool, um, that run throughout that area. Bristol is a big area for attracting from Gwent, for example. So the, the, the point you make about Liverpool and Chester playing that sort of magnet role in North Wales is absolutely the same with, with communities in, in Mid and South Wales. Uh, we, we only use the, the Cardiff example in this presentation. It doesn't figure too heavily in our report, but it's there to point out that the interconnectedness of towns is very much around where you're based geographically. So that the point around Cardiff equally applies to the point you make about um, communities in North Wales, with Chester and, and Liverpool. Uh, your third point was around um, the DV valuation uh, on land and trying to ensure the health and social services when they've developed new services base themselves in the best location to, for communities to make the best use of them. Um, I can't talk about what happened in the past. You know that that particular example far better than me. But I do know that that is something that we've, in our report, have highlighted to Welsh Government. When you talk about making town centre first a policy, a reality, these are the sort of things you've got to sort out. Otherwise, it's pointless doing it. It's just paying lip service to the issue. So unless you are prepared to make some changes to some very fundamental ways that we work now, you're never going to be able to use these other services to support that regeneration ambition. So the, the point you make is a, is a great example of why we need to do it. Um, on the Triorchy bid, um, Triorchy bid was set up by the community itself. I think it's one of 13 or 14 bids across Wales. Uh, it's not really had much of a role with Welsh Government per se. It's very much a community-led organisation. Um, the, the person that's the chair of the body runs the local pub in Triorchy. It's had support from the local council, but it's very much a, a community-led initiative and a community-led approach. Uh, Welsh Government are no doubt interested in its work, but it's not something that they, they're... Um, actively sort of working with as it's, it's, it's at that community level. Um, the Carol Williams review, that was commissioned by Welsh Government, not by ourselves. It just happened to come along at the same time. The three towns were selected. Um, I'm not sure on the basis um, of, of the information, but they, they wanted to pick up on, I guess, an area in, in South Wales, an area in uh, West Wales and an area in North Wales. So they, they felt the right fit to um, understand some of the challenges of different communities. Coming back to the first question, which I think Keith Evans raised, it's really to try and get that reflection of, you know, um, the different communities in Wales and trying to pick those up. In your final one about um, location, absolutely agree with you. It's, it, it is essential to get the location right. Um, and without that, you, you're not going to be able to make regeneration work in a way that's meaningful to local communities. Rwyf to um fwy o links i stuff dyn ni'n dynnu'n y gorffennol, mae hwnna fe lot o links i wybodaeth eraill. Um, a pethau dwi'n gobeithio nhw chi'n ffeindio yn ddefnyddiol. Eto, mae gynna ni odiwch fawr iawn i chi hefyd am y sylwadau da chi wedi rhoi yn y chat. Mae unrhyw beth, os da chi'n misio siarad, croeso chi'n sticio cwestiwn i fewn o fynna na ni'n gorau godi falle. Um, a pethau am a landlordiaid i, si, I ffwrdd ac yn codi rent sy'n mawr ar ac yn gadael adeiladau yn wag, mae ma hwnna yn thema sy'n wedi codi yn mewn gwanol sylwadau dyn ni wedi gwybod y dynig. Felly, mae gynna ni law i fyny gyn y cynghorydd Don Mill, sy'n chi'n licio. Thank you very much and uh, thank you for this uh, webinar today. Um, yes, uh, I was pleased to see quite a reference to residential because I feel residential within town centres gives it the vibrancy you sometimes uh, can lose. Um, 
with the more colder towns. But <clears throat> uh, you did also mention about the loss of services, particularly banks, post offices, etc. But the, the one area I wondered whether you did look at was the actual independent stores and shops compared to the chains and the effect that they have because clearly we do get occasions when some major chains decide that they're going to cut back and they'll wipe it out. And the smaller uh, towns are the ones that suffer. Um, and did you look at the effect of that and how that has changed and how that might change in the future? Um, and along with that, you also mentioned about planning. And one of the problems I think that planners may have is that the regulations are too tight to allow local choice uh, for reasons that uh, don't perhaps normally fit in with what uh, somebody writing the original planning regulations would see. And, you know, is there any possibility of perhaps greater flexibility of a local need rather than uh, some kind of national uh, standard? Okay, thank you for that. Um, three, three good points you've raised. Uh, we, we, we looked at the independent um, and, and sort of, I guess, national change on, on two levels. One, we were able to access some really good data by the Center for Retail Research that draws out some of the different challenges they present. And you're quite right. National change are driven by profit. If they're not creating profit, then they have no real vested interest in, in an area. They'll shift to wherever they can see profits being realized. They operate in very different principles. To independence. Um, there was nothing really coming through that on, on how the pandemic was influencing some choices, other than the number of stores that have been closed nationally. Uh, the big risk, I guess, is how you link that then to out of town. Well, we know that there are more uh, national chains in out of town facilities and they are changing with less demand. And it's really about how you repurpose those areas. Now, in England, they've freed up the planning system to allow you to convert some of the, the larger units and out of town to things like um, leisure centres and gyms which I know Welsh government are not keen on because they think that will just create other challenges in, in a different way. So it does need to be thought through. But I think the point you made, which is a really important one, is how can we make the planning system work for us? So I think there, there are two things that we've raised with Welsh government. One is we have place plans. We think they're really good at giving the local community and, and local councillors the opportunity to shape a response on the ground. I think the big weakness with them is that they don't have the same statutory basis as neighbourhood plans in England. Now, if that was the case, then they would become part of the planning system where a local led response can be provided that will allow you to, um, I guess, as a community, drive some of these local choices. And we have made recommendations in the past to this. It's been, I guess, one of the areas that Welsh Government's not keen to see enforced. But I do know that the, the head of planning is part of this ongoing work with Welsh Government and the minister, deputy minister, sorry, has made it has been very clear that his expectation is that whatever needs to change to make town centres work and be more vibrant and thrive in the future, we've got to think about and we've got to support. So I think the points you raise are exactly the right ones around the planning system. It's got to really be led by that, but it's got to have a bit more flexibility. And, and I think from our point of view, from our work, we see players' plans with more power and influence is a good way of driving that. Um, right, I'm going to allow you and again, Tom, GV. Um, so I can have it in Kavlin again. In in our on sides of the other zone. Yeah, I'm sure it's like. Okay. It's Councillor Gerang Thomas. It is um, a cabinet member for regeneration at Merthyr. Um, I'll, I'll have to get my IT um, team onto that to see if they sort that out. Really. Um, just like to thank you both um uh, for the webinar today, and and I think you captured the picture very well. Um. The slides that you showed of Merthyr Nick, I think, was spot on. You know, um, we are we are in a we are a small authority, and I suppose we're lucky to have just one large town in, in Merthyr Tydfil. So we've got one town centre to concentrate on. Um, we're in a strategic position on the heads of the Valley Road, and what we are seeing at the moment is businesses on along the edge of the valleys. This is a Quite a successful restaurant in Glenith at the moment in Cumbrach has opened a second restaurant in Merthyr last week and there's another one in Abergavenny that's coming to Merthyr as well and we are seeing businesses now opening up on our high street almost on a daily basis so we, we, are, we, are, we are thriving at this moment of time um, during the pandemic uh, we did an, an economic recovery plan with the help of the urbanists 
and the means um, of, of firms of consultants. And from there, we've, dri- dr- we've, we've drawn up a, a new master plan of the town centre. We've, we've got the new bus station and we're looking to enhance that down with the new railway station linking the both together. And looking at that one slide you put on there, Nick, showing how Merthyr was different to everybody else, where we had a lot of office space and not a lot of residential and community space. And I think what we've noticed through our our work with the consultants was, is most of the old buildings in Merthyr are three-storey. And the two top stories in the, the shops are full underneath, but upstairs is nothing there. So we're looking to turn those buildings into more residential to get more people living in the town or offices again. So there's people in the town center, you know, all the time spending money in the town. And the other thing we're gonna do to try and encourage that on the old bus station site, we wanna make that into more of a community space that, you know, that parents can bring their children to, put them there to play, you know, in a safe environment where they do a bit of shopping or have a bit of rest from shopping. And I think that's that's how we see it, you know, and um, we've got a bid, we've got a town center partnership so what we have in, we're having the feedback from the consultants, from the, the retail businesses in the town, asking, telling us really what they want. So, you know, it's quite positive for us, you know, and, but we, we, we are seeing, though, our neighbouring towns, you know, are, are suffering. Barclays Bank shutting, shutting in Aberdeer, you know, that, that's, that's a, you know, that's terrible for them. But, um, you know, but at the moment, we're doing OK. So, yeah. I think I think you really really well you really understood our position Nick anyway thank you my only response would be that we did spend some time with the head of service in Merthyr and he talked us through some of the stuff you were doing it was um, really helpful so so thank you to your to your council staff they were excellent Elizabeth Evans Josh, Josh on. Um, thank you, Nick. That was really interesting. I was, even though the report is online, I know I was busy writing my notes. So thank you. Um, and I'm glad that the Welsh government are looking at um, non-domestic rates because what's happened. I, I'm I'm in Ceredigion, like Keith Ceredigion County Councillor. Um, I represent Aberystwyth, but Aberystwyth, their town centres particularly the main street, is just decimated at the moment because um, before COVID and certainly after COVID, um, the big, you know, the big retail outlets have left. Well, they're the ones that commanded the big shop fronts um, and they had the business rates to go with them. So they can't be offered now, unless there's a small pop-up, um, they can't be offered now to small um, local independent businesses because the rents are high. They're not changing. And of course, they still command that um, high business rate. Um, in smaller towns like Aberiron, you know, they, they benefit from business rate relief. But we've, we've got a big a couple of big shop fronts. The thing that is killing us and it's what's favoured. Um, by the planning system for far too long is the outside um, retail parks where uh, free car parking is offered, like you've mentioned. But then the local authorities, because they're there and it is land that has to be maximised as far as income is concerned, are used as cash cows. And you you just can't have the two, the never the twain shall meet. So we have to address things like that. But since COVID, I've seen it e-commerce, home delivery has just gone through the roof. Could you tell us what was the response of Welsh Government regarding that pressure on our towns, please? Thank you. Josh, Sean. Great question. Um, I think you picked up two things there, I would say. First one around out-of-town retail free car parking. So, I mean, the the example that has been pushed in Scotland, which is a really good one to think about is that the, the recommendation from the town partnership review there is that out of town retail now has to charge for parking at rates equivalent to the town centre. And that's um, been recommended by the group, whether it's been taken on by the Scottish government, I don't know. But they're saying that basically you've got to make sure that the, the system doesn't um, favour one side over the other. Uh, but that's certainly something the minister's going to have to think about. Balanced with that, however, is that, you know, we have this net carbon reduction target in Wales of being a you know a, a contributing to, to being at least a carbon neutral public sector but also making inroads in carbon emissions 
So I think that the, the, the view Welsh Government has is they don't want to do anything that's going to favour um, or support a growth in car use so that they're keen to find better ways of making the public sector infrastructure work more effectively. Um, but free car parking is a massive issue. You can't get away from it. And then you want about, you know, how the planning system works to support this. Absolutely. Um, Neil Hemmington, the Chief Planning Officer for Wales, is part of the group. He is expected to come up with um, more radical local solutions that enable local authorities to start managing some of these big challenges, um, and particularly around the change of use in terms of empty buildings in towns. Um, and, and the point you make about landlord rents and how they almost cripple you to find alternatives. If you have the opportunity to read Carol Williams's report, much of his work focuses on the landlords and how they can basically stop a town centre thriving and surviving. So um, the work in Bridgend, for example, I think there's a single landlord owns I can't remember the exact figure, maybe a third of the shops in the town centre. Uh, and that person is not prepared to, to shift on what, what he or she wants. But there's little you can do then. And that's why you then come up with places like Stockton, which took the radical decision to spend money. Let's buy up these empty places. Let's use compulsory purchase powers. And let's, let's take control of it and, and reshape it. Now, that works in an area where you've probably got one large town where you can attract sufficient investment. I think the challenge Wales has, and it's one we acknowledge, we're, we're a country of small towns. We've got lots of small towns. We've got very few large places, Swansea, Cardiff, Newport and Wrexham, probably the, the four big ones. But beyond those, you know, you're talking about towns of in the tens of thousands, not 50 and 60 thousands. So there's a different dynamic. That's why we try to think about the interdependency, view towns not as standalone, but how they interconnect. But I mean, the point you, you raise is, is the right one. This is the planning system at work and it's a planning system that's got to find the solution. Well, I can, no. Sorry, just to end on that, the only thing I would say is that the Deputy Minister has been um, very, very clear on his expectations, um, terrifyingly so, I would say. I mean, I wouldn't want to not deliver what he's saying you have to deliver. He's, he's really raising the bar, and, and I think that's what's needed. Um, and the career of the Nathalie. Um, I don't want to say that the Nathalie is what the Cassette Evangelia, the Guise Evangelia, the Magin Bomb, and Rupert, and Nick and Dice. Right, Magin, Clow even again, John Morgan, Sahilkia, Dad Butcher, a common question. Maybe read it so that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, John Morgan, Council in Blaine, Gwent. Um, so obviously next to Merthyr and we got the the reverse to be quite honest um, we've got numerous uh, absent landlords which is a lot of the points that have been brought up this morning um, I, I was actually thinking about but town centres to me the face of your area is the first thing that somebody will look at industrialists etc if they're looking to relocate into an area and, and the first thing people look at when they come to, to buy a house etc um, I, I think there needs to be a balance when you, you look at residential um, because what we are finding a lot of absent landlords at the moment are converting their first floors, etc., into um areas of multiple occupation and um and bed sets. And to a, a great extent, they're able to to call on government loans and grants to, to help them do this. And what I'm noticing it's it it's driving away um the a number of um the elderly from our town centres, you know, you know, the people who are actually use in local town centres more than anybody. And to an extent, um, there could be a ghetto effect. Um, so I, I'm wondering what can actually be done that, for, for that element. I, I think that when you look at um, residential areas within town centres, you have to be a bit, we need to be a bit more specific to over 50s or, or certain areas of, of the population. Um, because sometimes residential within town centres can have the opposite effect of what you actually want. I do like the idea of a local-led planning system to be moving forward. Thank you. I think there's two things you've raised there. One is that we know that we've got a housing need crisis in Wales and that the Welsh Government's committed to 20,000 new homes over the life of the current Senate because we know there's not sufficient accommodation to meet needs. So whilst I take your point that if it's not handled right, and it can, it can cause as many problems as solutions that it's seeking to provide if residential is, is not managed in the right way. Um, but I come back to the place plans. Where you see them really work well 
it is a, a system that allows local people to shape the solutions that are needed in their community. Um, and, and the one thing I, that we've certainly taken from this work, when we look particularly in the Dumfries example, that you can find solutions, you can find opportunities to do different things, but you need to have someone leading it and you've got to have the community behind you. Um, so if you've got good, strong local leadership where people are prepared to use, you know, you've got quite extensive powers as councils. You can do lots of things. I know it's, it's difficult. The legal system is not the easiest. You need to have people who um, have the knowledge and skills to do it. But a lot of this is within your gift to drive. And, and I mean, the message we've picked up is that there are places in Wales that are bucking the trend and making this happen. Um, you know, it's, it, it is difficult. Don't deny that. But I think if you can just give it that focus as members and, you know, support the direction of travel and really focus on town centres, use the planning system to the best, um, work with the community to, to develop a, a, a place plan or a bid. You only need one or two people that really have that passion locally that really want to invest in an area and they will create that, that groundswell of opinion that really drives it forward. And I would say your role as members is fundamental to that. So yeah, when I said planning then, I, I, I melt um, um, planning committees, et cetera, as opposed to, uh, you know, Blaine and Gwent are um, looking at police making plans in all our towns at the moment and, and, and that's going forward. And I totally agree with you about um, the community having a, a big input and, you know, if you haven't got them on board, then you're not going to succeed anyway. Absolutely. And it's good to hear that you do, you're doing that work locally. That's really good. Um, I, I'm a bit sick of it, but it's just to do all the above them with the consistent today. Mar, as the kid that even continues to say all, and I'm a whole now with the middle. Quite sharp about that skin. As a drain, I continue. You need to go after that. Pantaning that in a pan with the ramser. At no other um continue that's book is say all. And you, my my name is with the Nangan to steal life about that. I'm going to this circle. I think I'm going to clean today. Um, uh, Keith Evans, can I tell him a little? Yeah, no, he question on us. Um, it's impossible. Um, Nick, thank you so much for the very concise and good responses that you've given to all these questions. It's um, it's a breath of fresh air in 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 a way that you know your subject matter so well that you're able to actually back back immediately to us uh, with responses. So grateful for that. You know, I really think that the Welsh Government, and I'm coming back to this focus on rural market towns, etc., they've defined it far too narrow. I mean, they take the same measuring stick, if you like, to, to go to your triorkies up there on the valleys, where, as you've said, one, one town leads into the other population bases, um, whereas the makeup of market towns in rural areas are totally different got examples here in my community where they want to concentrate on the main street itself. That's what they see as a, a town, where in fact it's far broader than that. Uh, because of the topography of, of the area we've got here, we've got to build up on the plateau. I mean, it's a, it's a flood base um, as far as the valley floor is concerned. So we've got to move up or knock buildings down and recreate something um, in regard to that. And some of those will be listed and will bring with them those kinds of difficulties and and um, and problems. So I, I think something needs to be done to, to get Welsh Government to change their focus in that one size doesn't fit all, as it seems to me it does currently, and to persuade them that uh, towns are living um, organs that actually cascade wider than the actual town centre, the main high street, for example. So that's something um, I think that needs to be readdressed. Moving on then to um, my view on public service boards. We've got them and we're talking about partnerships and people working together. I think the excellent talking shops like many partnerships tend to be. They don't really deliver at the end of the day. And they all go back into their own little uh, advent calendar doors and close the doors swiftly behind if you begin to talk about money. You know, because everybody is willing to talk, willing to share, willing to co-work, etc. until it comes to that, that pound sign. And at the end of the day, they're using our public money. It's, it's our money. Uh, and they should be doing it in the, and spending it in the best interest of all of us rather than defending 
um, their empires, if you like. So that, that again is is a, a huge problem as I see it in actually moving towns forward from the prosperity and the from the austerity that we've had and the impacts of the, uh, the COVID pandemic over a sustained period of time as well. Now, thank you. Thanks again, Keith. Um, three good questions. First one about High Street. I absolutely agree with you. I, I think hopefully what our presentation shown you is that because in the post World War II period, town centre regeneration was very much tied to creating shopping centres. That high street focus of retail was, was pretty much driving policy choices locally and nationally. Um, it's an important role going forward, but it has to be balanced with changes in society. So we know that e-commerce is going to grow. Um, we know that anchor institutions like banks, building societies are disappearing. Um, but high streets still play that heart role in many communities. So it's finding a different purpose for it. And that means you have to use the rural, um, sorry, the, the planning system to, to make that work. Um, Rural being different, I mean, the one thing I would say is we could have mentioned, um, and one of the things we did draw in our, in our fieldwork is, is the example of Narbeth, equivalent Triorki, which we know is a market town that has really bucked the trend, has been really successful at regenerating itself, um, often without direct influence from um, the tiers of government. I mean, the, the local authority plays an important role there, don't get me wrong, but it's very much community led. Um, but the point you make at, at the end about PSB is having this strategic role but often they, it stops when it comes to putting their hands in their pocket. The one thing I would say is that um, Welsh Government has been very clear that they, they've got this policy that's set out in the re reconstruction plan of town centres first. The minister has made it explicitly clear to people on the working group that I want this to become, become real now, not just something that we aspire to. It's got to have meaning. It's got to have impact. So, I mean, whilst they've been able to, I guess, um, talk about the challenges and the problems, but not necessarily find solutions in those strategic forum. I think the expectation now is that that starts to happen. So I'll, I'll give you an example. A number of years ago, uh, North Wales Police relocated its main police station from the town centre in Wrexham to the edge of the town. Now, it was done for the right reasons, a better quality building, cheaper costs, cheaper running costs, easier access to um, the infrastructure network. Going forward, the minister is saying things like that will never happen again because the, the loss of that building in the town centre has sucked the lifeblood out of Wrexham in some ways. So we've got to find ways that make, make public bodies invest their key infrastructure in the towns that exist. And that's what they, they, they're seeking to do through these working groups. So I think that the problems that you've raised and others have raised are exactly the challenges we play back to Welsh Government. And it's the things that they're really focusing on and taking forward. Um, and I mean, ultimately, the line that myself and Sean used when we met with um, the civil servants was that the thing we don't want to do in all of this is to come back in five years time and say nothing's changed. You know, that, that's the worst thing all. You know, we, we don't enjoy doing these pieces of work, which really pour over the detail and come out with some quite strong negative messages. We'd much rather do pieces of work that said everything is really working well and there are things that others can learn from to improve. But in, but in reality, we're about change. So hopefully what we've given the minister uh, and, and people in Welsh government is the opportunity to start making some of those changes. But, you know, the bit they need to do is to, is to tie it to that local delivery and, and councils have a role, town and community councils, but also the local community. Yeah, just to take a bit of a nick, that's a bit of an ingobithia. Can I at the Arvoki have a good bot? I think in the Nall, I can look at the dot. I hear it for mine, has bit an icky dish at the West Lassetan in Bunda. Um, Dioch Elichard, am ich comment at the chat to my bit of a river hill, my yard and on a dal. Essence or um, the police fans are continuously all. The 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 magna he come in at the medal am best a hilly kewel sits a hilly kewel spoke with him pam not even going with the his shot the the him on that day go in. The skinny them do you lot even the one or so so in really shot the 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 birth is a common question. A cross a hilly to hit can any the compass hot throw or answer the legal thing at all. Um, I'm going to need oh, the shampoo the other name well than the video on um, one of the need to spend it's been on a great for the upper TV so I'm going to know but I'm not sure if I'm going to return to the technology digital you got the data seven in my far official you um, you know my bottle I'm into my own to put it at session I've actually have a the new video about this digital and moon 
gwella sydd mae siopa yn mynd i dallt i marchnad a dos bod gyda ddyna, so mwynhau ynllo byth sy'n chi'n cios byd ond dwi'n mwynhau trefi smart di yn o'r cynllun. Um, cynghorydd? Ie, yeah, diolch, John Paul. Cynghorydd Mike Piers, llaw chi fyny eto? Uh, yes, thank you for inviting us back for some questions. Uh, one point I wanted to raise was the issue of uh, car parking. Um, before the county council in, introduced car parking in the town, we put evidence from universities, etc. Uh, in our case, not to have car parking in the town, but the county council insisted. And as predicted, the, the footfall uh, decreased uh, quite alarmingly. Um, it's uh, been better during the COVID period because all the parking charges were suspended. Um, they were reimposed in October. But what the town council do every year is we pay the county council an agreed sum of money to cover the cost of monies lost through free parking. So in the town, we provide free parking in December and footfall increases quite dramatically. So the proof is there that car parking charges do have an effect on towns that really in, in some, some businesses are, are, are struggling. So it's the view of maybe the audit report, what it can take to Welsh government to see what we can do about car parking charges, considering that um, the outer town car parks are free. And I saw a comment before about charging uh, for out of town, but I, I don't think that really helps the towns that are having to pay for parking. So it's just a general comment as what Audit Wales are doing with Welsh Government on car parking charges and, and whether there's a case that if a town puts forward uh, about the impact of car parking charges, Welsh Government in a position perhaps to override the County Council who were there, obviously, to raise money and not perhaps look after the interests of the town centre. Thank you. On the, on the two points you raised there, um, I would say on the first one about what can we do to, to direct Welsh Government, we don't direct, we make recommendations on, on, and they should respond to our report. So we, we're not in a position that they have to listen to us. It would be great if they did, um, and, and that, that would be really positive response, uh, but it's ultimately within their gift and how they deliver that. Uh, the point on the car parking about introducing charging on out of town, I think the example was really just to show that it's levelling up. You have the same approach for, for both sectors, in town parking, out of town. If you don't charge for one, you shouldn't charge for the other. Um, so that's what the Scottish Town Partnership Review has done, really. You either have free parking everywhere or you recognise that you've got to have the same levels of payment so that not one sector doesn't benefit over the other. Um, and I take your point, you know, you, what you don't want to do is, is introduce more charges that, that can impact people um, but but the, the key part of this for our mind is really having a better public transport infrastructure network in place that really joins things up and that still isn't there yet in many communities particularly in rural Wales where there are some real difficult challenges. In terms of what Welsh Government's doing in response well transport is down as one of the key themes that they're taking through on the finance group and is one of the areas that, the, that they will be looking at to understand the opportunities that, that exist to come up with a workable solution that supports towns to thrive. Where, where they've got to in that, they're still at the discussion stage and drawing evidence together and coming up with some ideas on, on what that would take forward. So it, it's on the agenda, it is being worked on, but there isn't a solution at this stage, I'm afraid. Um, Nothing Carol Williams are Oedd bod canran fawr o'r bobl o bobl yn aros hira'n ganol y dref wedi cerdd adna hefyd. Uh, Dwi o hwnna'n ffaith i fyr iawn, a dwi'n anodd chi ddarllen o'r doddiad nags, mae o'n er bod o'n benodol yn spi ar dau i'r dre, mae o hefyd, mae yna lot o beth ydych chi bi gofynnu ar gyfer unrhyw dre, achos bod nhw'n eithaf, wedi dewis y dau i'r dre, achos bod nhw'n eisiampla da reid gyffredinol lle, o'r math o ddynamics ydy bod y digwydd. Ta, Keith Evans, fach llawch chi fyny? Diolch, mae'n eisiau bod yn cael gwerth ymarian 
o'r bore bo'n cadw chi fynd i'r dyrdeg i'r gloch. Um, yeah, mae'r misydd parcio yn elfen ac yn isiw fawr ar draws Gymru Gyfan, pob sir fi'n meddwl, mae pawb am gael um, parcio am ddim, um, a chi'n clywed gweld pam ddau siopau yn, yn gofyn am hynny. Ond mae'n agost i'r edrych ar, mae'n agost hefyd i'r awdur dwi'n dweud i gynnal misydd parcio ac yn y blaen. Um, of course, yr un peth arall mwr yw wrth gwrs, mae'n ffordd i ni fel awdurdodau i godi un cwm yn ydy. Um, I ni yn ngheredigion, mi'n credu bod e rhywfa'n dros miliwn y bunner nhw i ddim. So, os byddai hwnna yn cael ei roi am ddim, rhaid ble mae'r toriadau yn dod felly, i dalu amdano fe, ac hefyd symud mlaen, rhaid ble mae'r arian yn dod i adnewyddu'r llinellau, rhaid arwynebedd lawr goleadau yn dynol gan y blaen. So, dwi'n mynd rhywbeth rhwydd iddo drosto, ond o bosib felly fe ddod rhyw bod uh, mae'r llywodraeth wedi bod yn diwallu yr arian i'n dweud golli dros mysoedd um, y Covid, lan i'n uh, cyfnod um, uh, mis y drefra. Um, so, ond mae'r trefydd fel mae'r eraill wedi gweud, mae nhw wedi elwan sylweddol gyda fwy o ffwtfol oherwydd bod y parcio am ddim. So, mae'n abrofiadau fel na fi'n credu all fod yn, yn ceisio fel yn wadu ar llywodraeth yn hynafiaeth. Ar, ar prif gwestiwn yn iawn mofyn wedi ni, mae hwn wedi bod yn adroddiad da iawn. Oes na fwriad i cael um, adroddiad fel um, dilyniant i'r gwaith mewn pedair blynau, fel bod chi'n ail edrych a gweud, wel, dyw e ddim wedi gweithio, uh, yn hytrach na bod eisoes yn adroddiad gan o beithio i pethau newid. Mae os na ddilyniant i'n nod i'r adroddiad. Thanks, Keith. Uh... We do follow up on our recommendations, so we do follow up to see that things are working. Um, myself and Sean have, have been involved in the working groups that Welsh Government have set up. We're not there in a policy role, we're there as observers, so we are aware of some of the things that they're doing and the plans they're delivering. Um, so we do try and support the direction of travel, but the intention is that at a point in time we will check to see things and move forward. I did have one other thing, Sean, just if we come into the end and there's no more questions, it was just, we had a colleague who was due to join us, but um, he had the dreaded Zoom deafness and he couldn't speak or, or hear anything. So he's dropped out, but he's kindly given myself and Sean a hospital pass to do something for him, if you don't mind, um, is just to talk about um, some work we, we did a number of years ago around scrutiny. So that the reason we've met with you today and laid on this webinar is really a pilot. We just wanted to find a good way of engaging with councillors about our national work to give you the opportunity to hear from myself and Sean about the work we're undertaking and, and if there was any legs in this going forward for other work we've got um, coming through. And if you felt it was a valuable process to use, then we're quite happy to put on events. If you don't, then we'll say thanks for attending today and, and won't bother you and, and leave you to spend your time more wisely. Um, but we see this as being really important to support you in your important work in terms of scrutinising the activities within your authorities. And for cabinet members, I guess, to, to, to provide the information they need to understand maybe how things are working elsewhere. So, you know, it's just that, that um, message, I guess, that if you find meetings of this nature helpful in the future, we're more than happy to put on similar events around our other national work. So the things we've currently got on the programme that we do to publish, we have a piece of work coming out looking at emergency services in the new year, how well they work together. And we've got a piece of work looking at direct payments, which is a form of um, payment under the Social Services and Wellbeing Act to help people live at home. So those are two pieces of work um, that are due out in the new year. And uh, there's, there's other reports then coming through um, later on in the in the year. But as just to say, this, this is just something to hopefully support you in, in that scrutiny role. And I'll hand back to Sean now. Apologies for taking up that, Sean. Dim problem with Google Nick, Dich Varel. Now, but we should get it. Do metal. I'm a fel y nec ydoedd eu peilot ydy hwn, ond doedden ni'n teimlo, mae'n gyfle i chi fel y doedd ledig i gael mynd fewn i'r gro ma'n, i ofyn i gael mynd fewn i'r manylion o bethau. Um, lle mi, fydd, mi fyddan ni'n ynddi gyfer um, teledau yn ynghyrchol, mi fyddan ni'n cynnal digwyddiad fwy bach mwy o glitr. <laughs> er mwyn tynnu sylw at y peth, ond hefyd dwi'n dwi'n meddwl os, os ydych chi'n teimlo bod o werth o a mi fyddai mae gen i ofn yn gyrru ffurflen at bwrdd allan efe bost ar ôl y digwyddiad yma. Uh, so ni'n gwythorog i fawr tasach chi yn i lenni fachos mae'n gwythorog i'r at bwrdd. 
um, uh, ni fydd o'n helpu ni fynd ymlaen. Os ydych chi'n gweld, wedi gweld gwerth i'r sesiwn heddiw, yna sy'n i'n licio cyn ymlaen i'n nid o tri ag ynnig o trw y gwasanaethau um, dysgu datblygu y bellyll yma hynny'n berthnasol. Er mwyn i chi gael cyfle gael beth chi angen allan o'n gwaith ni? I, I help i chi wneud eich gwaith. Um, Gwrna medrwch chi da? Rita, ar y nodyn yna, un i beth sydd ar ôl i wneud ydy diolch fawr iawn i chi gyd am ddod, diolch i chi gyd am y cwestiynau a chysylwadau yn gweithorogi fo. Uh, diolch hefyd i cymen um, a lliogi pobl bydd allwyd dwi ddweud. Ac, ia, jyst llenwch y ffyrlen adborth, gobeithio bod hwn o werth i chi. A dwi'n gobeithio fel yn eich eto yn trafod pwnc a gadroddiad arall. Diolch ar iawn. Gael felly ar y rhan ni, um, Siôn i ddiolch i'r ddoi, chi'n yn swyddogol felly am y chwaith, mae wedi bod yn ddefnyddiol iawn dwi wedi meddwl y bore yma. Um, a dwi wedi bod yn ddol i llawen y blwyddyn newydd a llyfrchu sy'n rhy gyd yn ogystal. Wel ia, yeah, ddol i llawen a blwyddyn newydd a i bawb hefyd yn dda. <laughs>